body. So remembering to every once in a while, switch your legs so that the non-dominant leg is in front or on top. You can move around a little bit to find that sense of grounding, that sense of support. You might take a moment to gaze off into the distance, or you might dive right into closing the eyes and it's always okay to make a choice about which works better. Good, and sometimes when we close our eyes and just come into that seated position, you'll notice your body, you're sighing or you're yawning or your body is just like, ooh, I get a moment to catch up. Good, so notice, marvel at the body's ability to find balance that way. And greet yourself right here, just as you are. Good. Noticing your breath, maybe. Noticing your body. Notice the whole story of what you've got going on right now. So maybe you're just still holding a little bit of tension in the face. We do that when we interact with each other. We kind of create a mask or a, a, an image that we want to project to the world. So it's okay to just soften your eyes, soften the corners of your mouth. Good. You might feel your shoulders then kind of softening down and back as you let go of your guard. And then just noticing in the neck and the shoulders, being aware of the terrain there. So your neck and your shoulders, what's the story there? Got it. I'm going to ask you during your practice today. So since we're going to slow it down, we'll have a little bit more contact maybe with our mind than we would do if we were standing, if we were using those big muscles. When we slow down, sometimes we, the biggest part of our practice is the conversation in our mind. So I'm going to ask you, as you notice your neck and your shoulders, and you imagine anything that's on your shoulders or in your mind now, I'm going to ask you to keep on setting it down. So noticing thoughts, just setting them down. Notice worry. And set it down. So every time the mind starts to take over and we start to feel our shoulders hunch up towards our ears or our breath start to get a little bit more jarred or stopped, just set it down. Set down the shoulders. Set down that attempt to hold on and let go. Good, so just breathing into the shoulders. You remember as you exhale, you always have that invitation to soften the shoulders down and back. Good, every breath out is a chance to let go. When you breathe in, you can bring your awareness, your love, your attention. And then when you exhale, you can let go. Set it down. Set it to the side. Good, and we're gonna start to move a little bit with the breath. So making sure that you have space around you. Letting the hands just come to the heart. As you take a breath in, you can let your arms come down and then reach all the way up. 
Hands come together over the top of the head. As you exhale, you can pull your hands down right in front of your heart. Move it nice and slow, mirroring the breath. Any goals that you have right now or ideas about how this practice is gonna unfold, it's okay also just to set those down. So letting go of the to-do list, even of your practice. Good. Next time as you exhale, just taking the arms down on either side of the hips. We're going to slow this down even more. So this time as you inhale, take your arms up straight out from your shoulders. As you exhale, just turn your palms towards the ceiling. As you inhale, you can take your arms up. And as you exhale, you can float the hands back down. All right, so the inhale is just to come halfway up, fingers reach out from the shoulders. Exhale, rotate, palms towards the ceiling. Inhale, slowly lift the arms. Exhale, slowly float the shoulders or the arms back down. So you can do that again, breath by breath, no need to rush. And notice the mind, if the mind starts to want to speed everything up, notice the mind attempting to do that. You can slow down, take it easy. No need to rush. Good, this time as you come up overhead, you can keep your arms reaching as you reach. Shoulders soften down away from the ears. So the inhale is here, reaching up through your fingers. As you exhale, you can twist towards the right side, dropping your left hand in front and your right hand in back. You can inhale up through the center and then exhale the opposite direction. So just starting to bring a little bit of movement into the spine, breath by breath. Good, and then just an extended twist here. So as you exhale to the right side again, you can take it into a twist. So left hand across the midline to the outside of the right knee, right hand right behind your right hip as you twist, looking back across that right shoulder, planting the sits bones down into the ground. And notice how the shoulders and the neck participate in this twist. Just take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, just turn your head to look across your left shoulder. So everything else is still twisting around towards the right side, just turning your head towards the front, twisting in the opposite direction, sort of wringing out the neck that way. Good, take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, let your head come in line with the rest of the spine. As you inhale, you can come back up through center, reaching your arms up overhead. As you exhale, you can twist to the left side. And so taking your left hand back behind your left hip, right hand across the midline, get a nice little twist. And you can feel that twist happening from the base of your spine, the roots rooting down, and then moving up 
evenly through the spine, looking back across that left shoulder. Good, noticing again the chest, the shoulders, the upper back, the movement of the neck here. We'll take a breath in. And then as we exhale, just turn to look across that right shoulder. Good, little movement, little change here, noticing the neck and the shoulders responding. Good, take a breath in here. And then as you exhale, you can let your head come back in line with the rest of the spine. As you inhale, you can reach your arms back up overhead as you spin to the front. And then as you exhale, you can just take your hands down in front of your heart. You just take a moment just to pause. Noticing any thoughts that are coming up now, any to-do lists. Allow those to be set down. Set it down. Good, notice your body right here in this moment, and the movement of the breath. Good, if you'd like to open your eyes, if your eyes are closed, you can drop your chin to your chest, you can blink your eyes open into your fingertips, and then just let your head stack up on top of your spine, and then stretch your legs straight out to the side, so reaching out through your heels, coming into kind of a seated, seated splits. All right, so those of us that have really, really tight hamstrings, we might need a little extra bend in the knees. If you notice that when you press your legs open wide like that, you're starting to round your back, then just take your legs in a little bit closer so that it's not quite so big as a stretch. Go ahead and flex your feet right up towards your belly and then clasp your hands right in front of your heart. All right, so take a breath in and just pull your heart forward like you've got a string in your hands. And then as you exhale, start to circle around towards, let's go right, towards the right side, back to the back, and then up the left side. So you're gonna do this sort of circling around through the hips. At first, you might feel a little bit hesitant. So you might be staying a little bit closer to the center of that circle. And then as you get a little braver, you might be able to go a little wider with that circle. So my favorite image is always of food. So <laughs> imagining that you're stirring a bowl, sweet or savory, whatever it is that you might be salivating about right now. And stirring right to the edges of that bowl. Good, and you can always slow down a little bit and let the movement be a little bit more exaggerated. And just a smooth, steady breath. I'm completely in touch with the body, movement by movement. Uh, that away. So a couple more big circles like that. And then when you're ready, you can come right back up to sit nice and tall on the sits bones, reaching out through your heels, flexing your toes back. You might still notice the movement feeling in the spine. Good. And then just switch the clasp of your hands. And then as you take a breath in, you can pull your heart forward again. This time as you exhale, you can come around to the left side and then back to the back and then up the right side. And now as you get used to this direction, you might have to take it slow. Once again, maybe starting right close to the pole of the spine and then widening out your circles as you get a little bit more comfortable. Again, smooth, steady breath. Imagine you're stirring that big bowl of goodness. Good, you might slow those movements down, really exaggerate and widen. 
Just noticing the sensations in your body and the movement of your breath. A couple more circles just like that. Good, and then coming right back up to sit nice and tall and release your hands down, just noticing the movement still echoing through the spine. Good, and then go ahead and pull your left leg in. So bring your foot in towards your hips and keep that right leg stretched out to the side, keeping that right foot flexed. And then you can put your hands on either side of your right leg and then just turn your heart towards your right toes. All right, so the heart is gonna be the guide here. You can just take a breath in, and then as you exhale, you can hinge the heart forward towards those right toes. And see how that feels. Good, keep breathing. And if you wanna take your hands a little bit further down the leg, you can. If you can grab a hold of that foot, awesome. And if you don't, can't and don't want to, that's okay too. And just keep rotating, kind of turning the spine so that the heart turns towards the toes. Good, again, slowing down the breath, staying with the sensations in the body. Good, give yourself a breath in just to come back up to that seated position. You can take your right hand to the inside of your right leg and then just slide it out towards your right foot. So your hand is on the inside of your leg this time. We're gonna let that left hand reach round behind the left hip. As we take a breath in, we're gonna lift that left arm up and over as we reach our left fingers for our right toes. So for some of you, you might keep that right hand right where it is. Some of you might take the right elbow to the inside of the right knee. That allows us to rotate open a little bit more. Good, remember whenever we do these lateral stretches, the side body stretch, really stretching by breathing deeply into the left side. Good, take a breath in and go ahead and sit up nice and tall. You can exhale your hands back down to your legs. Just pause for a moment. Good, noticing, noticing, noticing. All right, and then taking that right leg back in, you can stretch your left leg out. So just tucking your right foot in towards your hips. You can stretch out through your left foot, nice flex in your left foot, coming up to the top of the sits bones or maybe even leaning a little bit forward and then turning towards your left toes. So we're just gonna take ourselves into that forward fold first. So we'll take a breath in. And then as we exhale, we'll draw the heart forward towards the toes. And your hands might stay right where they are. You might creep your hands along your left leg. You might even be able to grab a hold of your left foot. Good, noticing if that becomes a to-do, if that becomes another thing to accomplish or get done. And it's okay to set that down. Just listen into your body and notice what feels best. Might be hands on the foot, that might be what feels best. That's totally okay. Good, maybe it's keeping hands on either side of the leg instead, enjoying that slow release. Good, and then with a strong inhale, you can lift your head and your chest and your belly, and then just take your left hand to the inside of your left thigh. You're gonna slide it out to reach towards your left arch. So you can feel that you're already starting to rotate open. You can let that right hand come back behind the right hip, and then inhale and lift that right arm up and over right fingers for left toes. Maybe this left elbow comes to the inside of the left knee, if you've got a little bit of extra space there.
Good, take a breath in. You can lift that right arm back up. You can exhale and let it come down. Just pause, give yourself a moment to breathe. Good, and then bring that left foot back in towards your right leg, sitting back into that nice cross-legged position. Letting your hands go on either side of your hips again. I'm just taking a breath in, lifting your arms up. Take a little neck stretch here. So let the right arm go over the top of your head as you reach your right hand for your left ear. This is gonna be tricky to mirror. You let your left hand come down by the side as you dip your right ear towards your right shoulder. All right, so you might be able to press the head back up into that right hand at the same time as you press your right hand down into your head, just getting a little bit of extra traction in the right side of your neck, left side of your neck. <laughs> do as I do, not as I say. <laughs> ah, so pressing that bottom hand down towards the ground just to deepen and open. Good, take a breath in, lift your head up. You can reach both arms back up overhead. Let's switch it out. So taking that left arm over the top of your head, reaching your left fingers for your right ear, dropping your left ear towards your left shoulder, pressing down through the right hand. Good. And then if you wanna resist your head up into that left hand at the same time as you draw your left hand back into the head, you can feel that deepen and open a little bit more. If that doesn't feel like your thing, that's okay. No worries, just let the weight of your hand carry your head a little bit deeper. Good, take a breath in. You can stack your head on top of your spine, reach your arms up overhead. Exhale, let your hands come back down. And just hooking your hands over your knees and just taking a breath in to rock to the front of the sits bones. You can draw your heart forward, lift your chin. As you exhale, you can round your back, drop your chin to your chest. So take a breath in and rock to the front of the sits bones. Heart forward, chin lifts, exhale and round. And just moving back and forth like that, breath by breath. So this is a good way to get a flexion and extension of your spine if you're not inclined to go on hands and knees, especially if you've got cranky knees or your wrists just can't handle that weight bearing. So this is a nice way to still get that flexion and extension, that movement in the spine. And you might consider just slowing down the movement a little bit here. Imagine you're moving through water. And if you find that it feels really good to be either flexing or extending the spine, it's okay, just stay there. So if this gets really comfortable when you round your back like that, and you can stretch between your shoulder blades, stay there for a couple of breaths. And sit down, any ideas about how this should be and just let it be what it is. Good, and just one more time like that. Slowly start to make it a little bit less big. So slowing down over the course of a few breaths, as you come back to study, right up on the tops of the sits bones, let your spine be nice and long. Again, just noticing as you feel, even as you stop the movement, you might still feel the reverberations of that movement. Good.
right, and then when you're ready, go ahead and come down onto your back. So we're gonna do some things on our back for a while, and then we're gonna come into a restorative pose at the end. So we will have to come back up from being down, so don't worry about setting yourself up for all that just quite yet. If you have a strap close by, awesome, go ahead and grab that. If you don't, you could grab a scarf or a towel, anything that could give you that extra support. So laying down onto your back, letting your knees stay about hip distance apart. Knees bent, feet underneath your knees, like you're getting ready for a bridge pose. Again, anything where you can come down onto your back is gonna be great for pacifying anxiety, that excess vata, the busy mind. So feeling those points of contact, really let yourself release into that support. So letting the pelvis be nice and heavy, rib cage nice and heavy. Good, you can take a breath in and just stretch your left leg up towards the sky. And then interlace your fingers behind your thigh. Good, you can press your left leg into your hands at the same time as you pull back with your hands. Good. And just noticing the back of the left leg is starting to open. You create just the right amount of structure for that to happen. Good. Then as you exhale, you can bend your left knee. You can take your left foot to your right thigh. We'll take a little stretch for the inner hip here. So taking your left hand into the left inner thigh, you can press that left knee towards the end of your mat. Or pressing the knee away from the belly. I'm gonna keep a good flex in my left foot so that I've got support for my knee joints. And just like that, noticing the sensation, the opening there. All right, you can release that left hand, lift your right foot up away from the floor, and then maybe even interlace your fingers behind your right thigh this time. Right, so slowly moving into that figure four stretch, whatever version feels the best for you. So it might be just like this. You can also take your hands out and put them along your sides. That feels more comfortable. If you have your fingers interlaced, you might bury that left elbow into the left inner thigh. Keep pressing the left knee open. Good, now we're gonna do a weird little twist from here. So just paying attention <laughs> to my wording. And if you need to look up at the screen, then maybe you can find more clarity there. It's a little tricky, usually we get everybody there though. All right, so taking that right foot next to the left hip, you're gonna let it come down on the floor. So now the outside of my right leg is on the floor and the sole of the left foot is gonna come to the floor. All right, now that I've got my legs over to the right side, I'm gonna press down through the back of my left shoulder and then reach my left arm out. And if I can, I can even turn to look towards that left hand, if that feels sustainable. So you can work with your upper body, open up your chest to the ceiling, reach out through that left arm if that feels good. Good, nice. take a nice full breath. Exhale out your mouth so you can really get some strong strength here to transition. That left foot is over the top of the right knee. I'm gonna take a breath in and lift up, dragging that right knee over now to the left side. So use my, my left foot to pull that right knee over to the left side. 
So stretch here is now on the outside of my right hip. And now I can transfer, maybe I can reach my right hand out to the right side. I can turn to look towards that right hand if that feels comfortable, or you can always just keep your head straight up. Good, and just let go of how this has to be or how this has to feel. Notice the story here and set down any thoughts or any judgment. Good, just taking a nice strong breath in, exhaling out the mouth. Good, as you inhale, you can take that right knee back up towards the center, step your left foot back next to your right foot. You might wanna feel for the edges of your mat just to reorganize yourself to the center again. And then maybe you just let your knees move a little bit from side to side, wiggle some of that stretch out. Good, and then when you're ready, you can stretch your right leg up towards the sky. We're gonna start out just by interlacing our fingers behind the right thigh. So you can press your thigh into your hands at the same time as you draw your hands back. So that helps us to kind of integrate that thigh bone back into the hip socket. It's a feeling of grounding, grounding the shoulders back into their shoulder joints. Good, and then as you exhale, you can bend your right knee. You can take your right foot to your left thigh. You might just take that right hand to the inside of the right thigh, press that right knee open towards the end of your mat, feel that stretch deep into the groin there. Good, notice I'm keeping my right foot flexed just to make sure that the knee joint is not rotating, it's just the hip that's rotating. Good, nice and easy here. You can release that right hand. You can lift your left foot up away from the floor. You might keep your arms by your sides, just press, just use your legs. You might interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. How that feels, you might even bury that right elbow into the right inner thigh to increase the stretch. Good, so these legs are gonna stay all as one kit and caboodle here. We're gonna change it up a little bit. You can take your hands out to the sides. Your left foot is gonna come by your right hip and tuck in and then <laughs> the kitty under there. You're gonna take the outside of your left leg to the floor, the sole of the right foot to the floor. So everything kind of falls over to the left side. You might be able to turn your hips a little bit so that you're stacking your right hip over the top of your left hip. And then if you pull that right left shoulder through a little bit, you should be able to square your chest towards the ceiling. See how that feels. You might want to keep your head where it is, or you might stretch your right arm out. You might look out towards your right hand. Good. Remember, you can't do it wrong. So just listen in. Dial back if you need to. Go further if you want to. And just keep breathing. Good, now take a nice full breath into your belly. Exhale out your mouth. We're gonna make that transition. So using your right foot to pull your left knee up and over, all the way over to that right side. Yeah, so you keep your right foot on top of your left knee to give yourself that continued stretch towards the 
right side. And then maybe you're going to stay just like that. Your upper body is going to stay squared towards the ceiling, or you might keep squaring your chest, pressing down the back of the left shoulder, reaching that left arm out to the left side, and maybe even turning your head towards your left hand. Good, taking a breath in nice and big. Exhale out your mouth. Good, take a breath in, everything back up through the center. You can separate the feet again so that the feet are hip distance. You might wanna check in with the sides of your mat just to make sure that you are square to the middle of your mat again. This time, just get those knees right up towards your belly. And you might just press your knees in towards your belly at first. You might wrap your arms around your shins. Give yourself a squeeze. Little seed pose. So pulling in, in, and in. Good, and then from there, if you've got that strap close by, go ahead and grab your strap. You can take your strap to the base of your toes and then just reach your heels up towards the sky. So getting into the backs of both legs here. So you can grab a hold of your straps on either side. You can take a breath in and just reach your heels up. And then as you exhale, you can stretch your legs both together. So noticing if there's a different story from side to side. Good. So think of this as if you think about sitting up in Dandasana and then coming forward into a forward fold, this is the same thing, except we've got so much more control because we've got a gravity, because we've got our backs on the floor, we can just really isolate that stretch. Good, so noticing the backs of the legs, the story there. No need to force, just taking it breath by breath. Noticing the thoughts that come to Whatever it is, whatever the worries, the concerns, it's okay just to set it down. Uh, so possibility is to move from here into a neck release. So if you wanna soften your knees a little bit, you could take the opposite end of your strap if you can get to it. You can take it right back behind your head, sort of like a little bit of a legs up the wall, except for without the support of the wall, using a strap instead. So once I place it just above my ears, that's enough support usually for me to let go with my hands. So I might let my hands rest on my belly. I might let my arms rest out to the sides. And remember, it's always okay to go in and out of a pose at any time for any reason. So just listening in and noticing. Again, bringing your awareness to the sensations in your body. So maybe noticing the reverse flow of the legs. Imagine opening up, fleshing out toxins, moving out anything that's stale and old.
Notice the neck and the shoulders. If you have chronic tension or something going on in one side or the other, you might even want to move a little bit from side to side just to make sure that you're letting your head relax back into the center there. And softening the face, maybe just letting go of stories in the eyes, the cheeks, the corners of the mouth. Maybe just a couple more breaths like this, if you like. Good. And then just taking your hands to either side of the strap. If you're still up there, you can release the strap from the back of your head. Gently place your head to the floor. You can bend your knees again. Put your strap over to the side. You might gather your knees in towards your belly one more time. Feeling the circulation return to the legs. So next place that we're going to go from here is into a restorative pose. And so if you have other stretches, other ways that you'd like to move your body beforehand, go ahead and take those stretches. When you are ready to move into that pose, we are going to take Supta Baddha Konasana. So if you know where you're going and what you need and you want to dive right in, you are welcome. If you do not, um, making sure that you've got a bolster or a couch cushion close by, so something that's nice and sturdy. This shape can always be replicated by just excess pillows, lots and lots of pillows, so don't be afraid if you don't have either the cushion or the um, bolster. You can always use uh, bed pillows, all you want to do is you're just making sure that you get a ramp underneath your back. So if you have a bolster, this is your traditional pose, you would take this block low and this block high and then place the bolster on top of that for that extra ramp, that extra height. But again, I just want to replicate this kind of triangular shape if I don't have a bolster. So maybe I'm going to use lots and lots of cushions. Um, that couch, couch cushions come in really handy. You can usually use a couch cushion up like this and then another one wedged underneath for that extra support. You could stack yourself some pillows, make it as much of a ramp as you can, use blankets, whatever you can find for extra support to make yourself that shape, whatever kind of shape you can come up with, all right? So once you've got that shape made, you probably still want to have some blankets and pillows and things close by. All right. I'm going to give you a few different options so you can set yourself up again in, in a way that feels the best and the most supportive for you. We usually use a blanket during class and so I'll show you that. I can tell you that when I do this pose on my own, I almost always just forego the blanket altogether and just put the soles of my feet together, take a pillow underneath each knee for support. That feels really comfortable for me. Let me show you the option for the blanket, just in case you've got one. So you can open up a blanket, traditional yoga blanket, open it up halfway. You can Make a roll with your blanket. That way, when I take the soles of my feet together, I've got this option to put the blanket over the top of the soles of my feet and then tuck those tails right underneath my knees so that I can support my legs that way. So whatever you need to do just to prop the space underneath your knees, you can. Once you're ready and you're lined up, you've got the support that you need, the soles of the feet together. You 
maybe stabilizing your base here with your hands as you take a breath in and lengthen your spine up. And then as you exhale, you can lower yourself down. And when you lower yourself down, just checking in. One thing that happens a lot of times is the head is back a little bit further than is comfortable for the neck. So you might want to take another pillow or a blanket, some kind of extra support underneath your head for a little bit of extra height. If you have a lovey close by that can come and tuck you in or put a blanket over you or you want to blanket yourself for extra warmth, you can do that too. You can get really extravagant by putting extra pillows underneath your arms to support your arms if that feels good. Or you might just clasp your hands over your belly and let your hands rest that way. For a nice heart opener, you might let your arms come out to the sides. Good. So lots of different possibilities for support for that position. And just working around, especially with extra pillows and blankets to find the support that feels the best for you. Good. So letting go of what it should look like and really noticing how it feels. Letting the feeling be your guide. Once you get yourself into position, a position that feels good, it's also a good idea just to check in one more time. As you just notice, maybe eyes are closed or gaze is soft. You might try a nice big full breath in. And then a slow lingering breath out. Usually that's a really good diagnostic to notice if there's any part of the body that might need a little bit of extra support. Maybe you need a little tuck here, or a little support here. Good, remember the hope with the restorative pose is to receive and to be. If there's any part of the body that you feel like is still working, it's okay to add in whatever support you need. Good. And then just letting yourself soften in to that support. A lot of the work here is with the mind. And so bringing yourself back and back, letting the body accept that support. And then we read you an anarchist Quaker's prayer to soothe anxiety. Hello, sweet one. I see how much you care about the world, about your communities, about all of us surviving plagues and capitalism and a world on fire. That clench in your throat, the knot in your gut, the tightness in your breath, this is how our bodies try to hold the world's anguish. We write the wrongness into our bodies, a beautiful and devastating lament. Just because your body can hold all the tragedy, the panic, the tension that it is holding right now, that doesn't mean that you must go on holding it all forever. The loving grandmother in you knows this to be true. Set it down somewhere nearby so you can pick it up again when you need to, but just for a moment, relinquish your illusions of control. Allow yourself to see the many-headed truth monster. It might, might not all be okay. It might end in flames and death and horror, no matter what you do. Take a moment to acknowledge how fucking awful and sad that truth is. 
and how not even the worst possible scenario would take away from your inherent worthiness. Simultaneously, it is true that human beings have always fought for one another, cared for one another fiercely, and carried the world's anguish in our bodies. And there are small truths, like that we cannot control the future no matter how much we wish we could. Don't worry when the truths contradict one another, real truths often do. No matter what, whether it turns out okay in the end or not, you carry the divine within you. You are enough, not because of the things you do, but because of who you are fundamentally, intrinsically, always and without exception. Take a breath or two to allow yourself to know this. And when we pick up the anxiety again, let us aim for flexibility. Movement space for breath to get in and out of your rib cage, gentleness for the things we can't do, and integrity giving us the strength and resolve to turn our sometimes excruciating caring into solidarity, mutual aid, and direct action. We are each one person breathing this one breath with common divinity we can do this together. So my invitation for you right now, my friends, is to set it down. To set down whatever you may be carrying in your mind, your body, your heart, just for now, just as we practice. And so maybe what, letting go of setting down the weight of your head, your thoughts. Really letting the weight of your head settle back into that support. The pillows, the blankets, the bolster. You might notice a deeper breath then, a sigh, and a feeling of relief. Good. Notice your face and imagine the expression on your face. And softening into a soft smile in the eyes, in the mouth. Take the tension from your forehead and your jaw and just set it down. Notice your body breathing with relief. Good, and the head moving on that neck from side to side, looking, wondering, watching, vigilant. All of that doing, doing, doing in your neck and your shoulders, just set it down for now. all the stories, all the things that you might be carrying. Setting it down to the side, just for now. Good. Let the weight of your arms get heavy. As they tug the shoulders down away from the ears. And let go of any gripping in your hands. Release your grip and soften. Notice what is in the hands, the sensation there. And set down whatever you're carrying, whatever you're holding, whatever you're gripping. Let the gesture be soft and open and receptive now. Noticing into the bowl of the pelvis, 
the hollows of the hips. And whatever might be stored there. And just for now, releasing the hips. The invitation is to let those knees open without resistance. Feel the soles of the feet touching, the steadiness there. And any tension that might be in the hips or the legs, set it down for now. And so you might notice your body, the weight of your body yielding to the support that's there. Good. Aware of any thoughts in the mind, and especially any thoughts that are worrisome and are troubling. And just for now, setting those down. Set those thoughts to the side. Remember, you can always go back and pick them up later if you should choose to. But just for now, set the thoughts down. Good. Notice your mind getting lighter, a little bit more space and ease. But in all that you're feeling here, in your heart, noticing the stories of your heart and what you're carrying in your heart. And just for now, as you take a rest, you can set that load down. Just set it down. Go ahead, remember you can set it down close to you. You don't have to let walk away from it. You can pick it up later, but just for now, Give yourself the relief of setting down that load. Just set it down. Good. And just for now, just for this moment, it's okay just to let go.
So just stay right where you are. Just noticing movement of the breath, feeling of your body, restoration of the nervous system, and that coming back, back home. Good. And you can just take your right hand and take your left thumb to the palm of your right hand and then just rub into that right hand to start to wake it up. Starting to massage out any tension in the hand. Moving into the fingers one at a time. And sometimes feel good to give a little tug at the fingers. Especially spending time at that web between your thumb and your pointer finger. And maybe even massaging the wrist a little bit and then maybe stroking the left hand, right hand, left hand up your right arm <laughs> towards your heart. And just increasing the circulation there. Bring yourself right back to your heart there. Good, you might give your right shoulder a little squeeze. To wake up that right shoulder. Good, and then just letting the left hand come to rest. You can then take your right thumb into your left palm, circle around and massage into the hand a little bit. Maybe tugging into each finger. Take your time. Moving into each finger and then maybe again, spending a little extra time in that web between the thumb and the pointer finger. Good, and then just moving into your wrists, maybe giving your wrist a little massage, make a cuff with your fingers and then stroking up the left arm towards the heart. You might use your right hand to give your left shoulder a little squeeze. Good. And then just rubbing the hands together. You can warm your hands up. You can take your hands to the outsides of your knees and use your hands to press your knees together and then shift yourself over to your side. So you can shift yourself over to the side right on the top of that pile, right with the bolster underneath you, or you can shift off onto the floor. You might bend your elbows and let your hands come to rest underneath your cheek. I'm just taking a few breaths there in that transitional space. Good, and then when you're ready from there, you can press yourself up to a seated position. No need to rush. Get yourself into a comfortable, supported place. Rocking around, switching your legs. Good, maybe eyes are closed or gaze is soft. Okay, let me return to the ending of that reading. And when we pick up the anxiety again, let us aim for flexibility. Movement space for breath to get in and out of your rib cage, gentleness for the things we can't do, and integrity giving us the strength and resolve to turn our sometimes excruciating caring into solidarity, mutual aid, and direct attention. 
And so just imagining these things that we've set down to the side, it might be tension from our body that we've set down. It might be thoughts from our mind, worries, to-do lists, concern about the future or the past. We may have set those things down. We might have stories from our hearts, heavy emotions, difficult stories, things that are hard to digest. We might have put those things down for now. And so as you imagine moving from this space, we've got more work to do than we usually do. What needs to come with? Consider your limited space. Consider the need for movement and breath. Consider what's truly worthy of coming with you on your journey. Good, as you take each of those things back into your body, your heart, your mind, bless them. Bless yourself. Bless this life and this moment. And finally, just bringing your hands to your hearts. We are each one person breathing this one breath with common divinity. We can do this together. So know that as you take your load, you are not alone. We can absolutely help each other carry. That's what we're here for. So just imagining how you'll step forward and continue this practice as you move off of your mat, out of your space, back into your life, back into the rhythm. Good. Reminding yourself that it's always okay to set things down. It's always okay to take a breath and get a break. Good. And then just pressing your hands in to seal your practice and then getting your hands rubbing them together. Lots of warmth and love in the hands. And let your hands stretch over your eyes if that feels good. Maybe letting your hands rest on your forehead. And then opening up the eyes if they're closed. And relaxing your hands down. Namaste. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Happy birthday, Sal. <laughs>